Welcome back everyone, welcome back to Let's Pocket Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones for the Game Boy Advance. This be part 26 of our Let's Play, and in the last episode we were still heading through the Tower of Valley. We completed levels 2, 3, and 4 of the Tower of Valley, so we're up to level 5. Where, like we've seen this one before, it's the one with the chest at each end. Uh, we've got Renak here. Uh, although actually, do we not need him? Don't they have chest keys? Yeah, those two have chest keys. Oh, but, yeah, actually, it's probably better to bring Renak just in case. Although, does Colm have the lockpick? No, he has a lockpick. Oh, we have a Knight's Crest. <gasps> oh, Colm, why did I not check you? I was just talking about this, because Ford needs one. No, Kyle needs one. He's the only one that needs a promote, right? Oh, uh, well, Tana needs a promote. Larachelle needs a promote. Mulder still needs a promote. Garcia needs a promote. But they probably won't. Noel needs a promote. That one would actually be kinda nice. But, Kyle's the only, like, main one that I think needs a promote. So, we will give you... Sorry, we will take from supply the Nightcrest... And you bet we're going to use it. a -ba bam And you'll probably be a Great Knight. I think Kyle works pretty well as a Great Knight. He's pretty tanky already. So turning him into a Great Knight just makes him a tank on wheels, basically. A super tank on wheels. Definitely turns him into, like, the Panzer IV of the game. Or the Pan... Uh, was it? The King Tiger. King Tiger of, of Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. Uh, right. Having said that, he's probably not going to get much training because we've kind of got our squad for the tower here. Maybe not our, like, endgame squad, but definitely our tower squad. So, let's just get into it, I guess. Alright, Renak, are you going to be able to fight this out? Oh, actually, probably not. You're going to need some help, so let's send Seth and Erica this way. And then this way, we've got you guys. We'll put a spellcaster on each side. Ephraim will just run and try and catch up, I guess. And we'll put Colm in the middle. Ah, uh, sorry, Colm. Cormac. And they should all like, come flooding out here, but Seth can definitely hold that gap for as long as he needs to. I might put Ephraim in the other gap. Oh wow, an actual attack. Oh, she's on elf fire now. Well, I feel bad for you guys, although they're not even going to take that much damage. I thought elf fire did more damage than thunder. I think it does, but I guess they just have higher resistance because they're a higher level at this point. Yeah, okay, it looks like they do just have a high resistance. Which is fair. I think that's why the game puts Revenants in so much. Because, like, they just have a really... They have really average stats. They have, like, decent defense, decent resistance, decent attack, decent speed. Like, nothing is special, but they're just very average in every regard. Which, for just standard, like line enemies is not too bad. That's kind of what you want. That's what we want as well. That's why Garrick is so good in uh, just standard line. Like Garrick and Paladins and things like that. Because they just have very average stats. They have no real failings. Whereas someone like Cormag is good now but only because he's got the Philly shield. Obviously I couldn't make him a frontline fighter because if they just had archers, like, he'd get destroyed. There, there'd be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He would just get shot for, like, 20 damage from some generic crap hole archer. What is that music change? That's a weird change. <laughs> okay. Bit strange. Oh wait, what am I doing? No, you don't need to go there. You can just attack from here. 
If you don't need to get closer, you would. That's the whole point. And then I don't want to, but I guess I'm gonna have to split up Erica and Seth so they can cover both approaches. Because I don't think Renak or Ewan will be able to cover it. So, Erica, you'll have to cover this approach, and... Well, Renak can probably slice up this guy. Just to get some space, and then Seth can close in. Yeah, Renak, you're really not very dodgy. This is why... That's why I don't like Renak, and why I don't use him much, because he starts as a promote but at level 1, his stats are just kind of shit. Like, defensive 10? That's bad. That's really bad for a promote. Uh, Ephraim, can you just hold one of these sides? Can you hold this side? Ugh, like, maybe? You get pretty beat not doing it, but... He should be okay. He just get dinked away at sometimes for like 3 damage or whatever, and then he'll level up, he'll get more defense. Yeah, see like Ephraim is defense 10, and this is why he's crap at the moment. You would expect way more from... from, uh, like a promote. Nice loot. Very nice. Actually, how much defense does loot have? She'd be a good example, because sages aren't very, aren't very, like, punchy. She's got seven, so she's actually got three points less than someone that's supposed to be an expert. Obviously, Cormag can just hold this side all day. He may even end up finishing this game with two complete health bars. Which is always fun. I love when people get two complete health bars, which is like 60 health, I think it is. And it must be more than that. Is it 80 health? I don't remember. But it's a lot. Because yeah, Seth's got 34, and that's still on one bar. It might be 80. Is like the two health bars. 80 is where the game stops keeping track in terms of like the bars and it just goes, yeah, he's got 80. If he gets hit, it's gonna take numbers off. Just like in the previous game with this uh, big dragon at the end that had like 100 health but it only tracked it up to a certain amount and then it just had question marks and it just like ticked it down invisibly until it got within range of the health bar and then it started dropping. It's kind of the same thing. Though I don't think player characters can get above two full health bars. I don't think the game lets you. It caps out that stat. As it kind of rightly should, because if you get as much health as that dragon in the previous game, like, that's crazy. You'd never die. It's usually a thing that uh, the generals get, it is that amount of health, like two health bars. That's normally a general thing because they have pretty good health growth. Which is insane, because they have good health growth and good defense growth, so they get end up with like, you know, 60 or 80 health, but they take like zero from most attacks anyway, so... Like, what difference does that make? They could have 10 health, if they take zero from most attacks, then... It doesn't even matter. It's just making them more powerful. Nice. Cheeky little crit there. That little swishy sword. Well, we're thinning him out here. Ooh, Seth took a bit of a dink. But even though he's crap, he's still good enough. He's less crap now, what'd he get? Okay. HP, strength, skill, all the good attack stats. Oh, the next game I'm going to play for Let's Pocket. I, I like it a lot. Actually, I'm tossing up between two games. They're very similar. But I might actually start with the shorter one, because there's one that's like shorter, there's one that's massively long, but more fun. Might do the shorter one first. Because I can work at the other one for like months and probably not finish it. Ooh. 
I, I still love the like revving your horses motor. Boom. Again, what's with that random music change? Not this music change, because it's like this is the battle music it always triggers, but it just randomly changes music in the other one. Seth, I like the crits, but if you could just do them the first time rather than the second time, that'd be neat. Yeah, see, like... Weird. I like the fade in and fade out, though. It's well done. It's very, uh, subtle. You don't- you barely even notice it's there unless you have some weird music like that. Though I will say, the battle music in this can drive you mad, because it always starts in the same spot. So if you get a lot of combat straight after each other, you just hear the same music every time. Du -du -du. Thankfully it doesn't hang around too long. One day I would like to hear the entire track. Like, I want to hear the entire combat track. Because <laughs> I think I always hear the first about 10 to 15 seconds of it. And that's it. Maybe it, maybe it like really just starts riffing hard or, towards the end, like maybe it gets crazy. But I will never know. Oh my god, that Revenant up there is really just... Oh sorry, that Entombed is really just waiting. He must be like the last thing to go. Because I'm just waiting for him to attack Erica this whole time and it's just not coming. There we go, my god. That took ages. You were there for the longest time. Why couldn't you not just attack? Send in your strong boys first. Try to make a bit of a hole. So that the weaker chomps can just dink away at you. Yeah, Seth, please don't get hit by this guy. Okay, crit now. Okay, well... You're a disappointment, Seth. <laughs> you always have been, and you probably always will be. If you're lucky, you'll make Erica very happy one day. Look at that. She's already more useful than her husband-to-be. Way more useful. To be fair, she's got 20 levels under her belt, whereas Seth's got, like, three. So I, susp I suppose that's fair. Actually, that's a thing in, um... I forgot about that in Awakening. Why characters are so OP in Awakening. Because you can... Uh, D-level them. So, like, you can get to... Because Awakening introduced, like, skills, where every single class had two skills, and you could have four of them equipped, so you could, like, cross-class and equip the skills that you want from whatever you want. Um, you could D-level your people into the basic class and, like, swap their class to get different skills. It was, uh, very, very cool. And I liked it. And it made... Um, like, grinding a lot more, uh, crazy. But it meant you could get some really powerful combos. And you could also get people that have had, like, 60-odd levels put into them, because they've just been to, like, 23 times. And that was at the low end. Um, in Awakening especially... And I guess kind of fates, like, it was rare for me to ever have a character that hadn't at least been three or four classes. Definitely at least three. Because, like, a basic class, a promoted class, one of the two promoted classes, and then the other one was normally the three. But sometimes, like, if a skill was crap and I wanted a new one, I could just, like, swap their basic class. You could change them from, like, you know, a horseman to, like, a... Mercenary, for example. It's not the same in Awakening, there's different classes, but... Like, you could effectively... Some of them you could change from, like, Cavaliers to Mercenaries, and then you could promote them to uh, Heroes or Swordmasters rather than Knights or Great Knights. So it ended up being quite... Uh, quite insane. Just what kind of strength you could get. Okay, we'll just wait, kill some more people. Yep, 
Yep. I hope that was worth it. It definitely wasn't. You just got super killed there. Eh. At least he actually critted. You, you know what, Seth? You're alright. At least you actually critted in the first round this time. So, I'm pretty sure because we picked Erica as our person to follow, I don't think that Ephraim is counted as, a, as an essential character anymore. I think Erica is the essential one. I could be wrong. Maybe maybe Ephraim is essential. But I think if he dies, I don't think we lose. I think he just dies now. I could definitely be wrong about that though. Oh wow, in the last episode we completed like three levels of the Tower of Valley. We'll be lucky to complete one in this episode, just because this one has so many boys. Nice. Some more XP, I guess. Okay, that was not a very good level. Luck's not bad to level up, but don't want it as like a primary stat. Just because it's really hard to tell what it actually does. I'm sure there's some hidden calculation somewhere that, like, introduces luck into everything. It's probably something like, half of your luck percentage is added onto your hit percentage, and a quarter of it is added onto your crit percentage, or something like that. At a, uh, at a guess. Keep it coming. Well, he's using Reginleif now, so he should just carve through this. I think it gives him extra defense, Reginleif. Because he seems to be taking less. Ugh, level 17 Ephraim. You got a little ways to go. Ooh. I didn't see that coming. Okay, we may not get the chests in here if we don't... Whatever. We don't sort of need items at the moment. We have money and enough, like, junk items that we could just sell, like, vulnerabilities and elixirs and stuff and get whatever items we need from a shop somewhere. Oh, thank you. See, like, that weird change. Oh, wow, Seth, you're getting a little bit uh, beaten up there, friend. I think that's the last guy though, right? Didn't see any more. Nice! That was a good level up. Strength skill, speed, defense. Basically all of the attack skills and all of the defense skills. And again. Poke him again. Pokey pokey. Uh, actually, we can probably... No, we can get the items, because Cormag's got a chest key, and Renax up here. So basically two turns and we're done. Yeah, no, we will be fine. Uh, Loot, do you want to just hold this? We'll send Ephraim over there as well. So that loot can kill whoever's standing on the stairs, and then we can stand on the stairs to block them spawning. Although that's a strategy. It's actually a good, very good strategy if you're struggling with some of the levels that have spawning enemies on stairs. You can just rush it, and just kill one of the guys on the stairs, and put someone that's a bit tanky uh, on the stairs. Because that way they can't... They can't get up, so they don't spawn. It was fixed in Awakening and uh, Fates, where they just spawn next to the stairs. But I'm pretty sure that's not a thing in this one. And Fire Emblem, the other one. Oh, nearly. Nearly. Alright, Renak. 
what's behind door number one? Ooh, a killer bow. Actually, I don't hate that we got our hands on that. What about this? A shine. Okay, that one's a little bit more... Little bit more meh. Though maybe loot will be able to use it soon. Which would be good to give her some level 2 light magic. Since lightning is good, but shine is better. Oh, there you go. Probably can use it right now. She's got C rank and shine requires... A D rank, so she is absolutely fine. I'll actually put Natasha up here. And Ephraim can go do something. Uh, we have killed them all though, so now we can just finish off these last couple of enemies. That's about where I hear every time. That that's about the limit of what I hear. Ooh, wow, you're on killing edge. Um yeah, better than using your sacred arm, I guess. Your sacred twin. Still, it feels like a waste of killing edge. Especially when you don't get a crit in 50%. You gotta get one here though, surely. Come on, Erica. Don't don't do me like this. Just crit straight away. Okay, not a crit. Try again. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, good XP too. You're getting up there, Erica. You'll actually be a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield very shortly. Great. We get to the next level? Sure can. So this, I think, is the highest we've ever been. Or I've ever been. I don't think you guys have seen it. No, never mind. I've been here too. Uh, I mean, this is still the squad. But you need a new sword. So let's give you an iron one. You actually need some more light magic. No, not a sword. Light magic. Uh, you're okay. Eh, you could probably use a new sword. I think... Cormag, you are... Mm, you can... Uh, I probably should get you a new one. Probably should get you a new shitty one. Just to be safe. Loot, you can actually take this shine out of supply. Ephraim, you don't need an iron sword. You can just use Ration Life, that will be okay. And you don't need a killer bow. Boom, done, let's go. I'm not going to get this tower done in this episode, but if I'm quick enough, I might get it done in the next episode. Boop. Get in there, Ephraim. Cause some havoc. Poke their body arches. Poke their arches up close. That's what we need. Oh my god, it's not broken. Okay. Uh, what's the quickest way to get Ranak up there? Is it this way? It probably is. You can't actually kill. Actually, let's just run you up here. Poke. And... Poke. And then, yeah, Renak, I guess you're going to hang out, like, just beside the entrance here, like this. Oh, yeah, this one's got some whites. That's fun. Wait, are they all whites? Or are those skeletons? I don't remember. Are the purple ones called, like, arch whites or something? Dark whites or super whites? Hmm. 
we'll find out in a minute. As soon as they're done shuffling their people around to get killed. Lining them up in single file. God, they're doing my job for me. Yeah, okay, so what are you guys called? No, you are whites. You're whites, and these are bone walkers. That's right. Fear of the bone walker. Nice try. It's a nice spear, though. Cormag would have been real scared of that one. Oh, she gets a Lance Reaver. Neat. Alright, Renak, you tag along up there. We'll send Natasha this way. Cormag, you want to smash through here? Yeah, you do. Ugh. I'm just getting stabbed in the guts like that with a spear. Just run through with a spear and you just shrug it off and keep going. It's like, eh, I've had worse this week. This isn't even the worst injury I've sustained in the last hour. God, I still appreciate the animations. I do like the animations on Ephraim's little cloak. I wish cloaks were still a thing. You know, like... Game of Thrones style, like big fur cloaks. Like, I wish that was still the style. That was cool. Cloaks are badass. You know, the ones you... You hang around your shoulders and you just clip them on with like a brooch or something. Some sort of brooch. Something like that. That'd be cool. Unfortunately, it's not the thing to do anymore. People think it's weird. Uh, yeah. We'll get Cormac to do it. He's a bit better at smashing. This this is just like... I don't even know. The, at the moment, the Tower of Valny is basically just cleaning up, like, I wouldn't say there's really any threat here. Maybe the whites will be a bit scary. I think they're more going to be scary because they're going to surprise me. I'm not going to realize I'm in range of one. Or I'm going to walk into one by accident because they're just scattered randomly around the place. Like those two there on the screen. Like, if I forget about those, that's going to get me killed. Could you not? You goddamn longbowman. Stupid longbows. They're very annoying in the enemy's hands because they are very often in the enemy's hands. Like, it stops being a surprise after a while because every second enemy has it. Especially on a map like this where the a the game knows and, like, the designers know that everything is, like, three squares apart vertically, so they just give everyone longbows. And then they end up dinking you from every angle every time you walk out. Oh my god, Erica, just, just please, just break through the wall, break through that glass ceiling, be the better lord, be the lord you know you can be. Okay, you just need to die. And since I'm in no hurry... I'm going to kill you as well. I'm going to use my last flux to just 100% kill your ass. Stupid longbowman. Every time. So sick of longbowman. Good growth, Ewan. Not as good. But I knew it was coming. I wonder if these two can actually get support conversations. I don't think so. That would be good if they could, because they've been hanging around each other a lot somehow, considering Cormag's so fast and Ephraim is so slow. How does that happen? Not even in this mission. Like, in, in all missions, those two have been hanging around together pretty frequently. I'm 
sure. Just keep keep pinging away two health at a time. Oh my god. Finally. Seth, please go kill this guy. Tell me you can kill him. Oh, thank the lord. Just no more longbows. No, no more longbows. We're long. We're done on longbows. It's probably going to be someone else up here that's got a longbow. What have you got? Iron bow. Longbow. There it is. It's just never ending. Uh, that's a bit more risky than this. You and I'm a little bit concerned about. He can still die. Loot, pretty sure should be okay. With a 95% certainty, she'll be okay. Oh wow, feels bad using Reg and Lave to just bust down walls. Just smashing against a brick wall to knock it down. This like magic spear. Ooh, nice pierce. 10 out of 10. Love it. Oh, steel ants. Uh, you know what? Chuck that one. Use the other steel ants. That sounds good to me. Hmm <laughs> hmm. Surely they don't have that many moves. Yeah, saw that one coming. Wasn't that worried. Oh, it looks so weird watching a sage do their little weird sky gestures and then using light magic. It's just not right, I tells you. It ain't right. Okay, well we are going to leave this episode here, so guys, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more content from me, the Aussie Nerd, feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos on there. If you think you know any friends who might enjoy my content, make sure you share the video too with them, I really appreciate it. And finally, if you want to leave any hints, tips, tricks, feedback for videos, or you just want to say hi, make sure you do so in the comments section down below so I can see it. And I'll see all of you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.